Hey everyone, how are you guys doing? It's been a while since I made a tech related video, 6 months ago to be exact, and it was all Final Fantasy XIV videos after that. But here we are. Today, we are unboxing and reviewing the EasyCap 266 Game Live Capture Device. To the uninitiated, this is what you use to record any device with an HDMI out. For example, game consoles like the PlayStation, Xbox, Switch, certain prosumer cameras, streaming devices like Chromecast and Apple TV, laptops, heck even a desktop as long as they have an HDMI out. These devices would be connected to the EasyCap and the EasyCap would be connected to a computer via USB. Using software like OBS, your computer would be able to read the video feed and record it. This is one of the methods used by game streamers playing on consoles or mobile phones when they stream on social media. Take note that this is a China product, a sort of knockoff or imitation of the more established well-known products like those from Elgato and Avermedia. The the equivalent products in those brands cost around 10,000 pesos or 200 US dollars, while the EasyCap 266 is only around 3,000 pesos or 60 US dollars. That's right, this here only costs a mere third of what the industry standard does. But remember, this is a China product. Being a China knockoff, it has its typical pros and cons. It's priced much much cheaper, yes, but the question is, despite the corners cut to bring it down to this price, would it still be functional and useful enough for people to consider buying it over the other famous and more expensive brands. And that ladies and gents is what this video is about. To see if the EasyCap 266 is worth it or should we just burn it. Now we go to the unboxing. Here is the packaging, nothing fancy. Upon opening, we immediately see the EasyCap 266 game live device itself. On its right side are the HDMI in and out ports. I'll explain about that in detail later. On the left are the USB 3.0 port that connects to the computer and beside it is the microphone input. That is if you want to directly connect your mic here instead of the PC. You may need it in certain limited setups but I wouldn't recommend it if you can directly connect your mic to the PC instead. At the back we have the model number. It's weird that the front says HD60 Game Live but maybe they're just emphasizing that it can record 60 FPS on HD resolution. Anyway, it also comes with a short USB 3.0 cable. And of course, we have the manual. It has instructions here on how to set up the gadget on both Windows and Apple. Neat. Lastly, we have the USB 3.0 to USB-C converter, just in case your computer or laptop only has USB-C ports. How thoughtful. Let's discuss the specifications. Compatible resolutions range from a minimum of 720 by 480 60 frames to a maximum of 1920 by 1080 60 frames, which means if you input 2K or 4K video feed on it, it will only read and output 1080p. If you're planning on using this for devices like the PS4 Pro, Xbox Series S or X, or even the PS5, I wouldn't recommend it due to a tremendous loss of image quality. But there are exceptions, like if you're planning planning on streaming on Facebook which has a limit of 1080p 60 anyway and you're just going to play on your PC screen and not output it to a TV then it's fine. System requirements. For the operating system, it's compatible with Windows 7 or later, OS X 10.9 or later, and Linux Ubuntu 14.04 or later. i5 or i7 processor or its equivalent are recommended, 4GB of RAM minimum, NVIDIA GeForce GTX 650 or AMD Radeon R7 250X minimum for the graphics card, and of course, a USB 3.0 port. For software, you can use any video or broadcaster apps that can read a video feed like OBS Studio, Adobe Premiere, VLC, XSplit, or Zoom. There's just a plethora of apps out there. Setting up hardware side. To test the device, we will be emulating the usual basic setup of a streamer, which is the following. We have the PlayStation 5 connected to the EasyCaps HDMI in port, and beside it is the HDMI out, which is then connected to the television. 
the purpose of this so you can play on your television like normal and you won't have to deal with seeing the other windows on your computer which can distract you making the game experience not as immersive here we have the usb 3.0 on the easy cap connected to the computer and we're also trying out the microphone in port as well it's now connected to a zoom h1 microphone finally we're also using a logitech c922 pro that's connected to the computer to act as the streamer's camera. We're all set, but first let me show you a quick tutorial on how to configure it on your computer. Like I said, there's a plethora of apps that you can use with capture devices such as EasyCap. But if you're a beginner, we can just use the most go-to app for streaming and recording out there. The free OBS Studio. You can go to obsproject.com to download the app. They have Windows, Mac OS, and Linux versions, so you're pretty much covered. Download, install, and run the app. We will be using Windows, but I'm sure things will be similar on Mac OS or Linux. Here at the Source tab, click the plus sign here to add a device. We'll be adding our EasyCap here. Click Video Capture Device, name it to your liking, and click OK. A new window will appear. The top item should be device. Click EasyCap U3 Capture if it's not yet selected. Change the resolution to custom. Select 1920 by 1080 as the resolution size. And 60 FPS for frame rate. For color range, select full. Next, click use custom audio device and select EasyCap U3 as the audio device. Now we're going to add the EasyCap's audio. For that, click Settings over here, go to Audio, click Mic, and select the EasyCap U3. You're not seeing the PS5 screen here because it's hidden. This is due to me using OBS to record this footage, but if you go over here at Source and click the eyeball, we can unhide the EasyCap screen, like so. Alright, now that we have everything set up, time for the ultimate test. We have the PS5 console and Zoom H1 microphone connected to the EasyCap. And the EasyCap is connected to the PC which is running OBS Studio. We will be recording in 1080p 60fps because that's the limit of EasyCap even if the PS5 is actually rendering in 4K. And here we go. Hi, uh, check out these glasses my girlfriend bought me. It's the meme glasses. Okay, let's start playing. We'll be trying out... Spider-Man, the remaster, so we can test the 60 FPS capability of the PlayStation 5. Mic test, mic test, can you hear me? Can you hear me? I actually haven't tested this before so I'm not sure if my voice would be too loud in comparison to the audio of the PlayStation. But looking at the audio levels, uh, I think it's pretty fine. Okay, we'll just play a bit just to Should test. Head to Norman's penthouse when I'm ready to back MJ up. And here we go. Oops. You guys are giving violent mercenaries a bad name! I haven't played this in a while, so I'm a bit sloppy. <laughs> That's why you guys were so crazy. You needed a nap. Enjoy. Let's do the next mission, so we can see a bit of cutscenes first before I end this test stream. We need an officer on the scene. Report came in. They're crazy matches. Okay, MJ. Over. I'm a couple blocks away. Let me know if you get into trouble. Thanks, Pete. Wish me luck. Oh no. Okay. Norman's penthouse is on the I top the floor, but the elevators are locked down. Need to get into the security room to unlock it. He'll never survive this. It's very tedious. Okay. I guess we can stop here. Can't wait to see the footage. Bye for now. If you want to see more gameplay footage recorded through the EasyCap 266, I'll be uploading a separate video containing the full playthrough of the first part of Spider-Man Remastered, so make sure to check my videos. 
and there you have it right off the bat it looks great and it is image quality is decent although a bit dark in certain situations we have that 1080p 60fps goodness and audio sounds crystal clear i never encountered an error with this in the few hours i've tested this non-stop i don't have much to say but it does what it's supposed to do so good job on that though i just have this little nitpick where i feel like we're not getting the best image quality I mean, in-game graphics are crispy clear as shown in the test earlier, but I'm not quite convinced with the game's UI and text. They're a little bit muddy and low res. The cost can be one thing or a lot of things, and it would be tedious to try and figure that out, so we're gonna stop here for now. What's important is that here's what the product can do and what the quality is like after using it in the most basic setup, and it does a pretty good job on that. But if we are going to be objective here, the easy cap needs to be compared to other similar products. Luckily, I went on ahead and bought two specimens to use for such an experiment. One is the cheaper unbranded China capture card for a measly 300 pesos or 6 US dollars, a tenth of easy cap's price. And here we have the king of capture cards, the Elgato 4K60, which is around four times its price. Stay tuned as I'll be making a separate unboxing and review video for each of these and we'll also be doing a video quality comparison between all three of these to determine the best 1080p 60 capture device in terms of price and performance. That's it for today. Thanks for watching up to this point and I hope you learned something. If you like this video, I'd appreciate you doing those YouTube stuff YouTubers do when they enjoy a video. Until next time.